So we're coming to the end of the matrices module, and we've really only sort of got three parts left. We've got simultaneous equations, we have transition matrices, and then the third thing, which is part of that, um, is steady state matrices. So we're pretty much at the end. It is the complicated end, let's be honest, um, but still we're pretty much there, and I have faith that it won't be too hard. It's just a few sort of concepts that we've got left. So, uh, simultaneous equations. We've seen simultaneous equations before, um, and we've solved them before. Uh, we haven't done that this year. Uh, you would have done it last year, and you would have done it um, in year 10 as well. Um, so here's two equations. Uh, just a quick bit of revision. Um, it's helpful to know this, but it's sort of not really accessible. Um, when we're trying to find the solution of simultaneous equations, when we're asked to solve simultaneous equations, uh, we're trying to find where two lines cross. Um, and that's why uh, before, um, or in fact coming up, we'll see parallel lines, they never cross, so that means there'll be no solution. And um, sometimes we get given two lines that are just the same line but different multiplications. So if they're the same line, they're obviously never crossing. Uh, they're always crossing because they're on top of each other. Uh, we'll see that a little bit later, um, so don't worry about that for now. But basically, we're trying to see where the two lines cross. So this line, in theory, should cross somewhere on the graph with this line, and hopefully it only crosses once because straight lines can't cross more than once. That doesn't really make sense. So solving means finding where the two lines intersect. I've just written that there for you. So for example, if we have two matrices, matrix A times matrix X, and that happens to equal this extra matrix, a matrix B, um, then if we want to just find out what this X matrix is, we can, we can actually shift this A over. So not like in normal maths, we can't just divide by A and sort of divide this side by A. Um, we can't just use the solve function on our calculator, solve AX equals B for X. We can't do that because we're in matrices, and we can't really divide matrices. You remember I said that to you a little while ago in an earlier video. So what we actually have to do is we have to multiply this A by the inverse. Do you remember, you might remember, if we do A times A inverse, that's the identity matrix. It's like one, doesn't do anything. Uh, that's kind of why we're getting this inverse over here. Um, regardless of whether you understand why that happens, if you want to find what X equals, you need to multiply by the inverse of A times B. So here's our original, A X equals B, and X equals A inverse B. Um, that rule will be the same no matter what, so you know, just remember it or put in your formula books. The exception to that is if the determinant is zero. If the determinant of the matrix is zero, like the A matrix, um, then there'll be no solutions. And that's a pretty rare case, but it will happen occasionally. And we'll look at what happens if that does a little bit later. So let's get down into an example. Here's my two equations. I'm going to put them into these matrices. So four and two go here, three and two. And because there's X's and Y's in this one, and X and Y's in this one, we can actually separate this matrix out um, with x and y here. I promise you that if you multiply these two out, it would equal 4x plus 2y and 3x plus 2y. And you could check that with the calculator if you want. Um, and these right-hand sides here, we've done that over here on the right-hand side of the equals. So this is the way you just have to remember we put a simultaneous equation into a matrix. So this is the matrix we call x, the xy thing. So we're trying to figure out what that is, the x and the y. Um, here's my a matrix, all these coefficients. And my B matrix is the right-hand side of the equation. Um, so we'll just kind of get practice at this. It'll be the same all the time, so don't stress about sort of not knowing how to set it up. It'll become quite routine. So for, for instance, if I have AX equals B, to solve it, X equals A inverse B. We can just put this in our calculator, A inverse B, once we've stored what A and B are. Um, and the calculator will do the rest of the work for us. Um, but just in case you wanted to do it the long way and you're really keen, um, you could say A inverse is 1, negative 1, negative 1 and a half. 2, and I just did that with my calculator, um, and then B is 5, 2, so X equals A inverse, that's this bit here, times B, so A inverse B, A inverse B, and then when you multiply those two it'll equal 3, negative 3.5, that's 3.5, um, and then, so that just says, because X equals 3 and negative 3.5, and over here our X matrix was X and Y, that top bit is my X, so I've written that here, the bottom bit is my Y. So we've really just found the solutions in the matrix, so X equals 3, Y equals negative 3.5. I wrote that down here for you. So X is 3, Y equals negative 3.5. So the solution to these simultaneous equations, where they cross, the coordinate that they cross on the uh, graph is 3, negative 3.5. That's like a coordinate, I might just put that in for us. So our coordinate is 3, Need a 3.5. And if we drew the graph and we drew the two lines, you'd see that they crossed. 
at that point there, 3, negative 3.5. So the same process, we're always just following this rule. We set it up and then we find x equals a inverse of b. Um, we'll get practice to that, I promise. Um, so, here's some exceptions. If the determinant doesn't equal zero, that's fine, you can do everything like normal, but if the determinant of that A matrix, remember the A matrix was this one down here with all the coefficients, if the determinant of that matrix is zero, then we've got problems. Um, not really, but it will tell us something different. That tells us there's no solution. They definitely don't cross each other um, on a graph. So the lines do not intersect. I wrote that there for you. This means the lines are either one of two things, dependent or inconsistent. And often I call that parallel, um, but you might call it inconsistent. It doesn't matter. Both are correct. So if the lines are dependent, they're actually both the same line. So in terms of a graph, let me just draw that for you. Um, you've actually just got like one line, and then that might be 3x plus 10y equals 50. You can see here we've just doubled everything. So 3 times 2 is 6x, 10y uh, times 2 is 20y, 50 times 2 is 100. We just times everything by 2. But actually the same line, like we could simplify this and it would equal exactly the same thing. So it's kind of like you've got two lines right on top of each other like that. Um, it's, tr it's tricky to, obviously for me to draw for you, but there's two lines right on top of each other. Um, so obviously, um, where do they cross? Well, they're crossing everywhere. So the solution is really like, there's an infinite amount of solutions. So we just write you, there's no solution. So this is the text that you'll say. Um, if, if you get asked a question, you'll say, therefore, there is no solution. Um, that's kind of the text that you'll use. Um, similarly, if the two lines are parallel, I've drawn two parallel lines here, they're never going to cross. They're never getting any closer or any further away from each other. And we know that because the gradients are the same. So you might not be able to tell the gradients are the same um, in these two simultaneous equations. But when you ask your calculator to solve this for you, it will say, um, oh, I can't remember what it will say. If you, try, if you look for the determinant, it will tell you the determinant is zero. And you'll be like, oh, okay, that's a problem. We, there's no solution. You don't have to say they're parallel, therefore no solution, or they're dependent, therefore no solution. You can just say the determinant is zero, therefore there is no solution. And if you graph those with your graphics calculator, you'll see that they're parallel and they're um, never obviously never going to cross if they're parallel because they're just traveling along exactly in the same way. So the gradients are the same. That'd be a lot easier to see in a y equals mx plus c style graph. Either way, all you need to remember is if the determinant is zero, then there's no solution. So that bit there. If the determinant is zero, then there is no solution. And that's it for simultaneous equations.